What's going on, guys, and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. I hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Today, we're going to be doing sort of a 2021 season preview of the New York Mets. We'll be taking a look at their depth chart, breaking that down. We'll also be taking a look at the moves that they made so far in this offseason and ones potentially to come. And then at the end of the video, I'll be giving you my predictions on what to expect from the NL East division in the 2021 MLB season. But I think Mets fans should be really excited. You guys have had a fantastic offseason so far, highlighted by that big trade from Francisco Lindor, but you guys have been pretty much involved in all the talks of everybody inv available in the trade market and free agency market, and again, I still think you guys are in the market to be able to add another piece, potentially two more pieces, um, before the start of you know, the upcoming 2021 MLB season. And I think you guys are in a prime spot to do some damage in the NL East in the National League in general. And I think you guys are trending in a lot better of a direction than you guys have been trending for the past couple of years. Um, but let's take a look at their depth chart and break that down. But before we get started, um, just note for reference that I am using Fangraph's roster resource um, as my guide to sort of go through this. Um, if you guys are wondering, you can check that out. I'll put the link down in the description below. Um, but let's take a look at the line Lineup, and this is a really deep lineup. I think that Francisco Lindor being able to slot a hitter like him in the three spot takes a lot of pressure off some of the other guys that are a little questionable up in the air. Um, and we'll break down all sorts of those guys, but I think it takes some pressure off of Michael Conforto, allows Pete Alonso to be bumped down, takes some pressure off of a guy like Jeff McNeil as well. And I think this is a really deep Mets lineup who has seven, eight guys who are potentially 20 plus home run hitters. Um, but slotted in the leadoff spot at number one is Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo is a guy who Mets fans have always had high expectations for um, and is coming off probably the best season of his career in the shortened 2020 season. Um, this is a guy who has never hit over 17 home runs in a full season, but hit eight home runs in a shortened season last year. Um, he doesn't necessarily run a lot. He won't get stolen bases. Um, not a great average hitter as well, but he probably is the best OBP hitter in this lineup. Um, he's a guy who also, you know, could be pushing right around that 20 home run mark. And I think he's a great guy to have in the line uh, um, at the leadoff spot. He can get on base, especially without what we know um, potentially about the production that we're going to be getting from Jeff McNeil this year. But Brandon Nimmo in the first spot, I really like him there, which means Jeff McNeil is going to be in the two spot, potentially another guy who could push right around that 20 home run spot. Jeff McNeil is a guy that last year I was really, really high on. He was fantastic in the 2019 season. Had an average, I think, right around 310. Um, showed some power that we didn't really see last year. Um, declined last year. Had a really tough start to the year, um, but battled back. Ended up getting his average right around 300. I think he might have even been over 300. Um, but I'd love to see Jeff McNeil get into those 20 home runs, raise the average a bit, make sure he's consistent throughout the whole season. And I think this is a guy who could bat, you know, 300, hit 20, 25 home runs, be one of your best OBP hitters in this lineup. And again, the big thing about Jeff McNeil is that he's got that positional eligibility, you know, with Cano out this year. He's a guy who's most likely going to slot at second base, but he can play, you know, all over the infield, even in the outfield as well. Um, third is Francisco Lindor. Obviously the big move for the Mets this offseason. Um, they were in on George Springer. Probably still going to end up getting another outfielder, but I mean, Mets fans got to be happy putting Lindor um, at shortstop at their third position in the batting lineup. This is a guy who's a 30 home run type hitter, a guy who's the quickest guy, the most likely um, stolen base threat in this Mets lineup. And that's a really interesting sort of piece to be able to put at your third spot in the lineup. This is a guy who um, doesn't necessarily have the highest OBP, but again, we'll push right around that 260 batting average. We'll provide that big power and then protection for your guys like Jeff McNeil because you can't really avoid Jeff McNeil like you might have been able to last year because after him, you got Lindor, Conforto, and now Pete Alonso. I think Pete, uh, Michael Conforto in that four spot, fantastic. This is probably, you know, again, one of the top three power hitters in this lineup and one of the three hitters who probably should be able to hit 30 plus home runs. Um, this is a guy who's got a decent average, gets on base fairly, you know, okay. 
I'd love to see Michael Conforto just absolutely go off this season. I've been sort of high on him on the past few seasons. I think he's a great guy to have in right field um, in terms of defensively. And again, in your cleanup spot, this is a really, really dangerous 4-5-6. I mean, 3-4-5, now having Pete Alonso in your five spot. Probably your best power hitter in this lineup. A guy who could push 40, maybe even more home runs. The one thing that I would like to see from Pete Alonso this year get that batting average up. He hit about 260 two years ago, way down last year. I would love to see him push 260 again, maybe even more, become more of just a complete hitter. We know that Pete Alonso can hit for power. But let's see Pete Alonso get on base a little bit more. Let's see Pete Alonso start using the gaps, slap some singles around, raise that OBP. You know, I'm a Blue Jays fan, so the most comparable guy that I can say here is Randall Grichuk. Randall Grichuk is a great guy to have defensively in the outfield, and before last season was only a home run hitter. But when Grichuk started having, you know, more of a laid back approach, his power numbers didn't go down. But his strikeout numbers went down and he became more of a complete hitter and was one of the biggest parts of that Blue Jays lineup and one of their biggest breakthrough guys in the 2020 season. I would love to see Pete Alonso be able to do that as well. We got Dominic Smith, J.D. Davis, um, and James McCann as your 6, 7, and 8. And this is what I love about the Mets lineup. These are guys who can push 15, 20 home runs, and you have power all over this lineup. Um, Dominic Smith potentially won't end up being in the lineup because I know the Mets are still in for um, some outfielders, Ozuna, Jackie Bradley Jr., um, but even if they don't acquire any of those guys, again, love having that power at the end of the lineup. Um, let's flip over to the rotation. And again, interesting. You got Jacob deGrom at the top of the lineup, going to be in the Cy Young talks, going to have probably a 250 ERA, um, maybe, you know, in between 250 and a 3 ERA. You got Carrasco Stroman as your 2 and 3. Now, I think the Mets still probably have to get another starter, potentially a James Paxton, maybe Jake Od Odorizzi. You got Walker, even in for Trevor. Bauer need one of those four guys. I think they got the money still to do it. So I'd expect the Mets um, to go out there and get another piece. I think putting a guy like Paxton or Odorizzi in your two spot would do wonders for the Mets rotation and being able to push Carrasco down to be your three and then Stroman to be your four starter. Um, but Carrasco is, uh, you know, a really underrated part of that Francisco Lindor trade. He was sort of a salary dump part on the Cleveland Indians part. But this is a really quality pitcher when he's healthy. A guy who's going to be probably a, a sub, you know, four ERA right around the 3.5 range. Really, really quality piece to get along with Francisco Lindor. And I think, you know, if he gets pushed down, a really solid three starter as well. You got Stroman, battled some health injuries in the past. Never be, really seen him be good except for, I think, the 2016 season it was um, after his injury. I would love to see Stroman bounce back for a full season. Um, and again, I think if you push him down to the four starter, you're just, you're really, really living good if you're the Mets. And then you got probably Peterson or Lucchese um, in that five spot. Your four or five is going to be Peterson or Lucchese if you don't add another starter. Lucchese is a guy who I always expected to break through for the Padres. Um, never really did. He doesn't really throw hard. He's a really, really similar pitcher to a guy like Marcus Stroman. Um, and then you also just acquired Jordan Yamamoto um, from the Marlins. Another guy who could really break through. Yamamoto is not an old pitcher, um, but he's a guy who saw his velocity drop last year. But again, if the Mets can figure him out, he's a bit of a project, but he could be a really quality starter for the Mets. And then finally, we'll just wrap it up really quickly with the bullpen. And it's a solid bullpen. You got Diaz, you got Trevor May, Miguel Castro, Dylan Batances. Um, one focus that I really want to pay attention to here is that addition of Trevor May. You talk about the addition of Carrasco and potentially other guys to that starting rotation. You talk about the addition of Francisco Lindor to your batting lineup and you know how good that lineup can be. But this is a great, great bullpen. Trevor May, if you don't know who he is, um, was a setup man for the past few years for the Minnesota Twins. A bit inconsistent at times, um, but will more than do the job for the Mets in the setup role. And I think Diaz could potentially be um, one of the best closing pitchers in baseball if he can find some consistency and I think the Mets are really locked down six seven eight nine innings and I think this is a fantastic bullpen um, as for the NL East division you'd got to assume that the Braves are still the favorites I think the Mets have done some fantastic things when you look at their roster on paper but it's really hard to justify how you would put them above the Braves in this division 
I don't think the Nationals or the Phillies are much of a threat to them. The Nationals aren't as good as they used to be. Phillies this offseason, um, they got all kinds of issues, but decided to only focus on re-signing JT Real Muto. Um, and then you got the Marlins. The Marlins were a much better team last year. Love that young rotation and what they're building over there. Um, but on paper, you'd still got to think that the Mets are better than the Marlins. So I would expect the Mets to probably finish number two in this division behind the Braves, but be making a real, real legitimate push at a wild card spot. And I do think that we'll be seeing the Mets um, back in the playoffs this year. But I want to hear your thoughts and your predictions down in the comment section below. Let me know. What do you guys think of the Mets? What do you think of what they've done so far this offseason? What are they going to do in the 2021 season? If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe to touchdowns to home runs for more content just like this as always guys thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you again next time